So uh, hi, Art. We'll get going here in a minute. All right. So I just want to, you know, thank you guys for coming. I appreciate whoever shows up every month. Um, it's hit or miss. You know, there's sometimes there's a few of us and sometimes there's a lot of us. And um, this week, I'm happy to have Erin, one of our photo focus authors here to do a presentation. Um, she's going to talk about how to be creative with color different ways you can do that. Um, and and uh, she does a lot of experimenting with her work and how she creates her images that are, um, they're unique and different um, as far as using colors. And I love that. I love I just, <laughs> the, this is the fact that you play and like what, you know, you're like, what if I do this? You know, yeah. it's, a, it's a great way to see what happens and you get some great results that way. So I'm gonna let her, um, share her screen and if you want to introduce yourself first a little bit tell them what you you know what you typically do and stuff sure and then um you can go ahead and start your presentation and if you guys have questions for her during the presentation it's okay to interrupt she gave us permission to do that yeah so. the the more we talk the better it is for me so um <laughs> if i could describe myself in one photo i don't know if you can yeah. see this this would be <laughs> kind of what I would describe my creative work. Uh, this is a self portrait that I did uh, with black light and uh, fractal um, type thing. Um, but outside of that, um, I'm a beauty photographer. I do a lot for makeup artists and hairstylists. Um, I work for Paul Mitchell, that type of thing. And I've been with Photo Focus Am I five years? I think it's got to be because I'm, I'm, I'm at five years. I'm at five years. So yeah, cool. longer than that, because I think I was at least a little, you were there a, a little bit before two, me. Yeah, before. So um, anyway, that's just a little bit about me. Um, so beauty photographer, but a lover of like self portrait and being super creative and really thinking outside of the box. Um, so let me share my screen really quickly. Hopefully everyone can see this. Um, I wanted to talk about creative lighting. Um, and for me, that's just doing something completely different and making it extremely epic <laughs> in the best possible way. Um, so when I when I think of like creative lighting, one of the ones I think of is high key. Um, and that is just overall increasing your exposure, um, a lack of contrast in your images, um, a lack of details in the shadows. You can tell on this image, she blends into the background. You almost can't tell um, where her shoulder is and where her neck is a little bit. It kind of blends right in to that. So um, to me, it conveys atmosphere and a mood. Um, and it instantly, this can instantly kill an ugly backdrop. Um, and a great way to do that is just blaring light at your subject or at the backdrop, excuse me. Um, these are some ways that I've done them outside. A lot of people do high key um, just with the sun, putting that right in the back um, and overexposing. You can see here the rock, this rock kind of goes into that and you lose that in the as part as well another thing i think of um, when i think of creative lighting i think of low key which obviously is the opposite of high key um, so instead of it being overexposed you want to underexpose your image um, you want there to be no detail um, in dark spots um, you can see up at the top of her head you can't her head actually blends in to uh let's see i think that you can see that now blends into um you know that backdrop can i hide that i don't know if you guys can see that but anyway um so there's full black spots on a low key and there's full white spots on a high key uh i really like low key because they can be really dramatic um really striking great shadows um, to play with. Um, and you can also kind of make a backdrop. Also, you know, that's ugly. 
dark by underexposing and eliminate batting as well. So here's a few times that I have done low key. And these were both, uh, this one right here on the red silky was actually in natural light. And the model off to the right of the screen is um, with strobe. And then, okay, this is where I think creative lighting really gets kind of fun is, um, when you just do whatever works. Um, this image right here was actually shot in natural light. Um, I held a poster board behind the person and um, the orange and purple that you see here are actually done um, by gels in front of my camp, in front of my lens. Um, so a lot of the ways that you can do color or gels is by cellophane. Um, let me see if I can stop sharing for just a minute. So um, cellophane, you know, your typical wrap. Do you remember when people used to wrap gifts with these right. like baskets and things? Um, you can actually find rolls of this at dollar stores. Um, but my favorite way to use colors let me pull these out. On Amazon, you can buy sample packs of all the gels. Um, you know, they come in like a little circle spiral thing and it's every big sheet of cellophane. It's a sample of it in, whoo, in this type of form. And I shoot on a mirrorless. So when I hold this up to my lens, it covers up my entire lens. So they're they're big enough then. That yeah, you they're totally to, big yeah. enough to use. Um, also, my light's going to get ugly for a minute. But <laughs> when you this, um, I have little. Oh, let me turn it off. Oh, that didn't work. Puck lights that I like to use, and putting a couple of those over my puck light also creates, um, minus I just turned it to blue. Ooh, there we go. So it's a white light, sorry, and put it on and it shines blue on someone. So I don't really need, um, these, are, these are good for strobes, you know, when I need to cover right. a much bigger light, um, but I really like these. And the pack that I have, ooh, strobing myself out here um the pack that i have i think it has 300 and something colors in it and i got an old school business wallet actually good from idea my dad yeah. i don't know if anyone else remembers these i still have a few of those i was gonna around. say i use them for um, stuff. and i divided them up by color cool in here so and they just yeah i have a question about the uh gels yeah. Are they calibrated in like a stop of light or half a stop of light? Yes. So um, this is like the blue, the blue colors. Okay. So like, yeah, might be a full stop and then a half a stop. Or yes. And if I did it right, I would have kept them in order, but <laughs> <laughs> it's not. more of, it's more of just pulling them out and looking at them because I have them all in color. Um, but yes, they do do that. And they are the, um, what's the famous brand of gels? Oh, God. Anyway, you can get it on Amazon. I'll uh, send the link so you can share that if anyone's yeah, or if you just send it to me, I'll, I'll yeah, post it when we, like, when we post the recording. Yeah, I think, I believe it's like 30 something dollars if that it's relatively cheap is it rogue i think it's rogue is i think one of the names right isn't that it or like rosca rosco or it's rosco i was like oh, yeah. okay yeah i knew it was an r2 but i was like i can't Rosco. i can't remember what it is um but on top of that what i really love about this is when i do get the sample pack and i find a color that i like then i can go back and buy the actual sheet um or find something 
you know, similar to that. Um, so those are my number one little tricks. My other trick um, to creating color a lot of the time is everyone knows Hobby Lobby, <laughs> but Hobby Lobby has these giant map boards that they actually use to make um, mats in picture frames. Right. And I just buy it by the big old, I don't even know what this is, if it tells me what size it is. But it's huge. You can see it's ugh. and it's eleven. It's eleven dollars. And the other way that I like to create color is I will put this up here and I'll shine a light on it and bounce that back off onto right. my subject. Um, this is just really cheap, easy <clears throat> and convenient. Um, and I have I can't even tell you how many of these I actually have because they have, I think 70, I think my light died. <laughs> Dang it. Um, but I have a whole array of those and they're super great to also pop up behind someone for a headshot. Yeah. Um, so those are some of my other ways to, um, to do that. So, Oh, and I forgot thing. Okay. Bummer. Okay. If you don't have these, let me, I'm going to teach you a trick. If you don't have this, take a strip of tape and then take a Sharpie and color on the tape and put it on your lens and you'll get the same effect. So mm -hmm. piece of tape, regular Scotch tape, tape mm -hmm. it on your lens or your hood tape it onto the side so it doesn't touch the glass obviously right, right. and then paint across it and that so the photo that i showed you first let me go back to um my screen sharing here this image of the orange that's what i had done i had i didn't have my gels with me um but i did have sharpies you always have sharpies <laughs> right in tape um oddly enough and so this is um there's a purple and i actually took the tape and went purple to orange gradient on the sharpie and just blended it on one piece of tape and it worked um the exact same that's same, awesome and, same and that that's something you could try it doesn't have to be portraits like you can no, do that with no, no, any, no. anything no. really yeah. if you want to oh, start messing around sure. with with lighting and or you know Yep. see what happens yeah cool. yeah so here's kind of an example we talked about the poster thing up here here's a uh event that i hosted where we shot with the poster this image down here is one that uh one of the students created while in that little get together in our club get together um here's where we did some um in fact bob who's on here was doing this too the strobes and we put blue gels on top this picture right here of my daughter is actually with tape um, over the front of it. Um, one yellow on one side and a pink on the other. Um, the one in the middle that I mean, obviously you can buy lights that um, let me. So the Savage wand, their little wand, let me, it changes. Mm. <laughs> it go. changes cool. colors. Um, it's similar to their um, the ice light, right? Uh, but not nearly as expensive. <laughs> um, but you, well, that's really doing bad. But you get the idea. You can buy other lights that automatically, um, you know, do RGB type things uh, for you. This one in the middle is the Savage RGB portrait kit um i use that so much i love that uh this image down here with the stripes on this girl's face is actually a projector i just we went on google we found some cool images and we projected them onto her face um and then these two uh down here these two self-portraits we um i did with black light and um 
black light and then a gel over a flashlight that I held and pointed at my face. And then like fluorescent paint on your face, right? Yeah. Or so I something used that, so uh, it light, so black it light paint. Light, right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And a black light as well. Right. Um, over that. But you can do, I think sometimes when people think of um, gels or colored light, they automatically assume you've got to be using like this with some right. studio lights and you really there's so many other ways that you can create colored colored light without um doing that so let me go back to i'm bouncing back and forth but um so some helpful tips i think when working with color um kind of a little bit of the color theory um you know what's complementary that type of thing um can be pleasing to the eye also your camera your white balance will affect colors um it, uh, you know you can change just i mean by shooting daylight and changing your white balance to tungsten or shade or you know any of those things you have the ability to kind of already play with color in camera just by changing your white balance um okay so the brighter the light the brighter the light the less color you see so um i always think of this as um a flashlight scenario i'm going to use my phone for this as an example so if i were to like get really close with the light to this it almost makes it look white but the further I go back, the more the blue comes through. It's the same with putting a gel in front of a light or your light source. The, the brighter, the more powerful that light is, the less color you are going to see. Um, so keep that in mind. And same with the distance your light is to your model or your subject, um, you know, closer farther away and the fall off that will create on your on your subject um keep bouncing back and forth sorry that's fine no it's great that you're showing the stuff okay of i was just like it's so slides. hard to like no show no no yeah sit no. here at right. this no, um it's good so uh okay darker gel colors such as deep reds blues um sometimes can block a portion of the light. Um, so those darker gels, you sometimes need to tend to have a bit more power behind your light because uh, it's harder for the light to get through. So like with a yellow, you know, you would need less than you would with a dark, a dark blue or green. Um, okay, so I put this in here, this image right here, because my wall, was actually white when I shot this. This is a wall in my house, actually. Um, and so what I had done was I had a light pointing up at my model with a blue gel on it. And then I had a um, beauty dish with just a plain white light hitting her face. And anything that white light hits, it will eliminate the color. So that's the reason why you're only seeing white on her side of like where the light is and everything else is blue. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So white will eliminate color and then whatever is not in light will be in color. Okay, I can't tell if you're shaking your heads or no, I think, that, I, think that, I think that made sense. Okay, okay. Um, oh, also another great way to use uh, colors or gels is if you have um, a seamless color paper of some sort and you want to change the color or make it richer or, you know, whatever you can, you can do that as well. Um, and then like I talked about, I think color theory um, is really important just because you can, they convey moods and emotions and all those things and, you know, 
Right. Like what? red, red is angry or stop. Or, yeah. You know, yeah. And, and blue, blue is, is cool mellow. And calming and, right, and, right, yeah. Right. Um, I generally don't like to shoot all the time with orange and yellows because I feel like they change a lot of my skin tones too yeah. much. Um, and yeah, and certain skin tones react differently to color and based off how light or dark right. they are a little bit. Um, so, so when you're doing a when you're doing a shoot with somebody and you want to do colors and do you, I mean, do you, I mean, you have to know a little bit in advance so you're not wasting models time. Right. Yeah. But, but every model skin tone is different. So how do you right. go about like, you know, is this going to work or isn't it, or you've done yeah. it enough now that you probably yeah. have a pretty good idea, you know, but um, initially, initially you would have had to experiment quite a bit. I mean, do you yes. just like come over, I need to find out how this works, you know, like to that's friends exactly, and stuff. <laughs> that's exactly what I've done. Um, yeah. At the top of my shelf right here, I actually have a head. <laughs> Oh, right, right. Um, and that has been really like that was helpful. Shooting on myself is helpful. Um, right. And just experimenting, just asking someone to come over and say, hey, I want to try out. Right. We have a, a club here that we used to meet every week and we were constantly experimenting and trying things, bouncing ideas off um, and sharing techniques and ideas. I will say I love Lindsay Adler. Yeah. Um, she is huge at creative lighting and gels and colors. Um, so I have, I'm reaching, um, she's got this really cool killer creative book. Um, and she kind of walks through all her scenarios and settings and oh, she cool. gives you, um, all her tips and tricks and she also has her education thing you know her on her website that right, you can right can do as well but really i think the main thing was is experimenting um there's been numerous times i just walk hobby lobby in the dollar store and i have a light and i'm shining it on everything <laughs> everything and trying to find new things um that can be interesting and quirky and you know, give me an effect of right. something completely right. different. Uh, Cause I'm someone that believes you do not need expensive e equipment and gear to do, to make work look expensive. Yeah, so. I'm hundred percent agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. So I mostly uh, shoot kids, which that sounds terrible, um, but <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'm mostly a, a child, which you can see all the dresses in the background and all the props. Um, I want to do that. The reason I wanted to take this was I had this great idea to do um, and we'll, we we'll, won't call it star Wars, but we'll, we'll call it star Wars. I want to do these <laughs> sessions of like kids with the Jedi hood um, mm -hmm. with the lightsaber and the light, like right. using that technique that you just taught us. I struggle though, because my equipment, um, I use like a flash on my camera, like a speed light. Um, I have a mirrorless as well. Mm -hmm. And then my studio is literally white walls, white mm -hmm. floors, white ceiling. Like, do you shut the lights off when you do? Like I was looking at the Savage wand and I think that that is exactly what I need for like that. I want to have the kid hold a lightsaber. The lightsaber. Look. Yeah. And I would, you know, Photoshop the lightsaber color but then use that savage one. So if the kid wanted red for, you know, the dark side or, you know, green or blue for <laughs> right. the Jedi. Yeah. Um, so when I saw, I already had this idea. When I saw this, I was like, oh my God. This is exactly <laughs> what I needed. Yeah. <laughs> and I the struggled. savage one, you could make look like. It looks like a lightsaber. A lightsaber. Yeah, <laughs> Minus, right. the only thing I hate about it is this is the battery. Right. And if anything, it should be on the back where the. Right the panels yeah, are right but if you could get them to like potentially hold, hold it it like this and pose it some way and so i don't know let me turn my lights off hold on just a minute because i always struggle like i i don't know if i should shut my lights off because then like my speed light i don't know if it's overpowering and i can't get the light I don't know if this on the kids faces much. so i don't yeah. know if i'm doing something wrong so this, let me see <laughs> This is as low as the sucker goes. Wow. Um, obviously, my camera is not 
let me see if I can do it back here. And then bright, it is like goes. So yeah. it's gonna it's gonna be like they're gonna be it's almost it's too bright to hold up to somebody's face even on low. I, I mean think that, if that you close. Could, if that you close. can do it with the right camera settings, obviously my yeah. camera or my little whatchamacallit. Let's see if I can do this without getting out of my chair. Like I could even have them hold the actual light figure and then have my assistant hold the light, oh, the light. on the color. Right. Right. I just struggle. Like, should I shut my flash off? Should I shut so one the of the things off? I think you should do to start is get your flash off your camera. Okay. So try to put the flash over here. Is it a bare flash? Do you have like some sort of soft box or anything on it? No, it's just a, like a Godex. Um, yeah. Okay. Like speed light, you know, that goes on my, like, yeah. it's like that. Yep. Okay. That's so what I, what I would do is I would maybe hang a sheet okay. or a, a shower curtain, something to diffuse that light a little bit. And cause you just barely want like a yeah. rim light right. right like just not a rim yeah no that's right a rim yeah all right on the side of their face and then this side you want wherever they're holding the thing to be the rest of the light so you okay. could even technically not use a speed light and use your phone or a flashlight and really just slightly shine oh that didn't work i actually have um but slightly shine it like it. this to give them that light and then on this side right. put that and it would be less less powerful than a speed light and, and more you'd be more controlled quality. more controlled for sure okay um i'd start with that first and okay. what i would also recommend is start with your main light the white light and okay. get that positioned where you want it to be set your camera settings to to that Okay. And then turn that light off and turn the green light or your lightsaber light on. Don't change your camera settings okay. and see what, how much green light or, you know, colored light you can see based off those settings. If you don't see enough, go back and tweak your camera settings with the main light on, make some changes and then turn on that green light again and just keep going back and forth to to play it's similar to you know when you're shooting strobes and mm -hmm. they always say turn your strobe off take a picture with those settings that you have for the strobe and if you can see ambient light still in your lens then your light your settings aren't correct got it okay. treat that the same way okay so, so like if you have any questions outside of it, we can zoom and we can demo together Thank you. and we can totally help. I can totally help you with that because I got children and my son has been a lightsaber. My kids Fanatic. light paint like a maniac. <laughs> so because my studio has like fluorescence and yeah, definitely um, turn those off. Turn, turn those, those off. off. Okay. Turn those off. Perfect. Um, here's what I'd recommend. You don't need a lot of space. Yeah. Go to a bathroom. Go <laughs> have your kids stand in a tub right shut the door turn the lights off it's completely pitch black in there and then Shine practice light. your light setting in there okay try that out first and if you're only doing i mean depending you know mm -hmm. eventually you can get to full body but if you're only wanting to practice like them you know kind of right. like this with this shot you could do that in a in a bathroom for okay. sure and i've taken Lots of shots. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate course. it. Erna, yeah. um, comment on yeah. the lightsaber because it's so bright. Yeah. Would you put those blue gels and wrap it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you could okay. definitely diffuse um, whatever you're using, um, you know, paper around parchment, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, parchment or whatever. Yeah. You could, and obviously this is really powerful, but you could go to the dollar store. I'm a huge fan of the dollar store. You know this? <laughs> go to the dollar store and get those wands or those, you know, they have the wands with like the stars on the top. Rip mm -hmm. that star off and just use that wand or, you know, something of some sort, but you don't need to use this because it is powerful, but this is really fun. 
<laughs> oh, I've so, already got it in my Amazon account. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's so it's so good. It really is. But you could you can even use glow sticks. I mean, yeah. you know, you could do something and make your own lightsaber, you know, type of thing. So yeah, for sure. I can't wait to see. I want to see what it looks like. So hey, I'm excited because I've yeah. got like the actual lightsabers. Like the I, yeah. I actually I live in Florida. So we're by Disney and I actually have oh, yeah. like a $200 oh. lightsaber. Like oh, it's nice. beautiful. So right. I want to use that. Right. Um, but the light from the lightsaber itself sucks. So right. it's like, it's just not doing anything. And I've yeah. tried turning the, like I said, I've turned the lights off. I've used the flash. I've used the not flash. I've right. done it in the dark. Like it doesn't work. It's just not bright enough because it's a prop. Right. Um, so that's why I had the Savage wand was like exactly what I needed. So yeah, for sure. And obviously remember too, if it's even got a little bit of color, you could mess around with that in post, right. you know, pull that into Lightroom or, exactly. you know, Photoshop or Luminar or whatever, tweak it there. The dark side and I can make the lightsaber red on my own in Photoshop, yeah. but it's just more getting that look. Like I want that black background, yep. exactly what you showed that with the like, like almost like you had the girl with the blue and the purple. Yeah. Like that's yeah. exactly what I want, but a Star yeah. Wars themed version. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. So. That was my selfie. I'm in a wig. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> my selfies are like, hey. <laughs> that, seriously, that's it's the a, only it's way. such a good way to learn though. Yeah. It is such yeah. a good I mean, I don't I'm not a portrait <clears throat> photographer, but there was a period of time um on when it, there used to be Google Plus and there was a selfie Sunday theme every Sunday. Right. And they were they weren't just selfies, they were self portraits. I mean, like people went to all kinds of trouble, yeah. whatever you want to call yeah. it, to create <clears throat> uh portraits of themselves. And I have a of my own that I did. And I mean I learned so much from doing that. Right. And and it's not what I do at all. Yeah, but right. it was it was fun. And you like you're like, well, again, a lot of it is what happens if like, what if you do that? Yep. Or what if I try this? And, you know, yep. that's just the the best. I think the best way to learn is just play and experiment with stuff. Thank goodness for my eight year old daughter. She does everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Maddie. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Stand I, here. yeah. I yeah. started my self portrait started because I was I needed a mental escape. I needed a way to just, and I also needed to test and try things out. And I wanted to know how people were doing stuff. And, you know, I got a house full of kids. And the only time I could do that was, you know, 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night when everyone else is asleep. And those have, I've created some of my probably favorite, you know, pieces of work that way. But then I'm able to, you know, transition that into collect like client work because I've already tried it out and tested it and know how it works and whatnot. So. And then you have examples to show potential clients too. Oh yeah, I mean, you have sure. you know that yeah. that's another way to look at. I mean, yeah. You're, you're well, just... and so my my work got me photo focus. So my self portrait right. series was part of, you know, it's opened other doors when people right. are you know, and a lot of people don't realize it's me, <laughs> you know, in the image, right. and so it's been pretty cool. I'm excited. My first article comes out sometime this week for you Ooh, guys. Dun, dun, oh, dun, cool. Excited. That's awesome. I was like, oh, this is new and exciting. So <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a good group. I love it. And if you ever need help or ideas or anything, I'm I'm uh, always around. So thank you. Yeah. Cool. Well, I know that was so short. No, but, but it was it was awesome. No, you packed okay. in a lot. You packed okay. in a lot. It wasn't like overcomplicated. You okay. know, you explain things very simply, which is what people, you know, you don't always need to go into. No, I hate tons fluff. of details. I'm not and a I, right. Person. Yeah. So no, I can't <laughs> either. Yeah. No. So, so does do any of you guys have any other questions in regards to doing this sort of thing or or I, I just had a real quick question and I, I don't do a lot of portraits, but I'm trying to learn more of that. Yeah. I do a little bit more <laughs> landscape and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But um, so so with and, and it's great. I mean, you do a great job, obviously, of getting the colors that you're after in camera with the gel, yeah. like say mm -hmm. the backdrops and so forth. And that do you ever find the need to like after you do that, want to tweak the colors a little bit, like in post processing, meaning Photoshop or anything yeah. like that, or do you pretty much try and nail it as I guess best as you can in in camera? Yeah, I always tell people I'm a photographer. I am not an editor. <laughs> um i i do not like sitting in front of my computer um i 
now does that mean I don't tweak every image? No, obviously I've tweaked some, but I really try so hard to get as much as I can in camera and then, you know, do some small little things on the back end. But there's, um, so this, this particular image was like straight out of the camera. I don't know. That's you awesome. can't really, it's like, it's just hard because it reflects. That's, that's pretty good right there. This was like completely in camera. My hair looks like that because obviously I'm not a real blonde. And when you put black light <laughs> in blonde, you know, blonde in black light looks like that. Um, I speckled paint on my face. And actually, I took this bouquet of flowers and shoved it in the back of my shirt. And that's what created all these little dots. That's it created like a little halo thing around my head. And I speckled black light paint on my face and held a fra uh, fractal in front of my lens. So um, I really try hard to get that um, in camera. Yeah, no, that's amazing. When I, when, when I look at that one, I think that maybe, you know, a lot, a lot of times you see that kind of effect that, you know, people use different textures that they use. Overlays. Yeah, right, right. right. But, but to do that without the overlays and actually get the speckles and get all of yeah. that, 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 that's fantastic. Well, and I would like you to know this was completely unexpected, but still love it. These are the ones that are the best, are the ones that you yeah. get a different effect than what you're after. Yeah, yeah it, was, it, it turned out to be like really great and I loved it. So it was awesome. Cool. No, I was going to say, good. I don't know if you can see, let me see if I can share um this right here was also this is a self-portrait of me as well this was also done in camera and this was one of um one of my well it's actually my second self-portrait that i had ever taken and i loved it so much and everyone's always kind of shocked that it actually just looks like if i pulled up the raw it looks exactly like that so so how did you do that then um, so long story, <laughs> but, um, I had taken a Batman cape of my son's and I had tied it around my head and put thing and then sp speckled bunch of black light paint on my face. Um, I was sitting in front of a V flat, so black side of a V flat and I held my, uh, black light in my hand. And I set my timer. I had my phone because I use my app for my phone. Um, I pushed the shutter and I, I did it for, I believe it's a three second exposure, if I'm correct, or it might have been four or five. And I stood there real still, as still as I could. And then I just rocked my head back and forth. And so um, that's why it looks like that. Because it almost looks like you had like you know how you make light trails with lights right like it, yes. it almost looks like you had somebody yep. like go around your head you know i know and that's because except I had the face had is except the face is is clear yeah. like straight right so and that's what i had focused on first something. was keeping my face still right in that shot and then you know moving back which is what created the swirls um because like i had said i had a black cape with all my hair tied up in it right um, so the cape, even the black part had speckles mm -hmm. on the top of it and. No, oh, very cool. And, and that's whatnot. the kind of stuff you get when you just play and like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. experiment with stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so much fun. So and I wanted to ask you, this was one of the things that I, ooh, that I just bought. So yeah. this might be something that I could use. Oh, yeah. Um, Cause yes. I do. I do nighttime uh, Christmas porch pictures. So I bought this because last year, the one I bought was on Amazon. It was a cheap one. So I invested mm -hmm. in this for my Christmas sessions this year, but I'm thinking like this, like you said on the one side for the light yeah, and then use the, um, the Savage one with the color. Yeah. This would probably be, yeah, and that's then great. turn that flash off on my camera completely. Yeah, totally okay. great. 
I'll try and if that. you're if you're writing articles, uh, you can write about the process of how you do Behind this and the then make make happens. it an article. <laughs> yeah, right. And all these guys on here are like, I want a Star Wars picture. <laughs> no, it's us girls. We're like, no, we're the Jedi's now. It's fine. <laughs> we just got done watching uh, Ob One, so that's what gave me the inspiration. Mm. I was like, you know, these new series they have the like when you first watch it. I don't know if any of you guys are Star Wars fans, but when you first turn on the Star Wars series, they have this scene where all the helmets and this flash of light like goes over the helmets and sometimes it's blue and red and green. Okay. Um, and I gave me the idea because I was like, kids love to yeah. be Jedis, but parents yeah. want more like fine art looking yeah. sessions. So, you know, I do the like cheesy fun sessions, but I want to do something for the older kids. It's a little more right. high fashion right. meets cool. Star Wars. <laughs> that's awesome so i'm excited so when i saw this i was like that's i need this lady i'm gonna say let me see if i can pull this up really quickly i'll show you this um maybe well you can kind of see it but let me share my screen uh we did this with my kids at cut facebook cut my son's head oh, off i love it but so I this image obviously let's see it looked like uh this from jumping on the tramp can you see that no oh the tramp's not oh, showing the up trampoline. i did i saw that article i want to read that yeah, yeah. I, just I just reposted that the other yeah, day but, yeah um and then i just with a, a pen in photoshop had drawn that's awesome the lines. I think, I think we all struggle as photographers to get action shots. At least I know I do as a portrait yeah. photographer. Like that has been, you know, it's yeah. hard for going from still to fast moving subjects. <laughs> yes, especially kids. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, all I do is kids. So it's like, you know, yeah. there's I applaud you for that. Kids that are, you know, just awesome. And then I have some that are, they give me a run for my money, but I love them. And that's, yes. you know, but I love the best. So can't do that. So I'm glad people can. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. But yeah. I know, I but work, all my photographer work, yeah. friends are like, send them to Jackie. I'm like, yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Cool. Yeah, it's not easy. I know. I worked at a studio for a year, and it, we did um, preschool. Oh, and you're like, no. Less. I'm like, okay, I tried it. Next. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, it's hard. Like my cake smash sessions, I would say are the ones that I, I find the hardest at times because I have kids that come in that are one years old and they hate the cake. And you're like, yeah. great. Right. They don't know that they're supposed to be doing this for a photo right. either. I mean, they're not really at one. They don't know that yeah. you're taking a photo. You know, they don't yep. understand what you're doing. So there's no <laughs> telling Dang. them directions. <laughs> Real fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, that was awesome, Erin. If, if oh, you guys, thanks. does anybody have any other questions or comments or anything um, that, that you have on Erin's thing or anything else that you want to talk about? You have like 10 more minutes if you want to hang out or we can call it I'm night. sorry, that was so short. No, don't apologize. Yeah. It was, it was, was because, perfect. Just, okay. yeah, if it's, you know, it's just enough. Short and you know, sweet, like to, right, right to the point. And it gives everybody ideas. Yeah. And, you know, enough information to ask questions about and go out and experiment on their own. And, you know, that's, okay. that's all you really need. You know, okay. it's not Can like we, you're going to. Oh, yeah, go for it. Oh, no, you know, I was going to say, because like I said, I'm just trying to learn some of the portrait stuff. And so far, I have not yet experimented with the colors and the gels and so forth. But I know mm -hmm. others in a couple of the groups that I'm involved with that do quite a bit of that. So that, that, what, what you demonstrated there was great. That's. Oh, thank you. It, it makes me want to go try it anyway so. well then you yeah. can write it you can write another article about it then <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on, on the introductory level i'm it. making notes <laughs> there you go no, I, I yeah and i've got two or three articles oh, in the works i will get I'll, i will get I'm just teasing I'm, I'm gonna get two of them in there in the next week and then i've got a couple other ideas for i'm just teasing. The next couple of weeks, so. like the it's like the etsy fail version like <laughs> <laughs> that's I'll funny my failed so, attempt <laughs> but you know that's how you they, learn i've had right? plenty it's of exactly how oh, you know yeah, none sure. of us none of us have, have become photographers by creating perfect images out of the no. out of the gate yeah so 
I should note too, the one where I moved my head like this before, um, I tried to paint my face all black because I thought the paint would show up a little bit better of the speckles and whatnot. And I actually painted acrylic paint on my oh. face. <laughs> oh no. Because it was, it was, it was probably like two, three o'clock in the morning when I was doing this in my basement. <laughs> and our basement was unfinished at the time. And so we just had a bin of paint and I took out a thing and I thought, I thought it was something else and it wasn't. And so I had scrubbed oh my, my face because it started to burn and I couldn't figure out why. And so everyone asks, how did your skin get that color with the black light? And I said, well, yeah. it's because I literally was like scrubbing my first layer of skin off uh, okay. before that. So there's plenty of fails in my book yeah. for sure. All of ours. I'm sure all of ours. Yep. How do you learn? Yeah. And they're done so. that. <laughs> Well, awesome. Uh, if nobody has any other questions or anything, I think we'll call it a, a night. Erin, thanks so much for that. It's nice to Thank have you. I, I enjoy just having like people come in and do presentations because it breaks up the monotony of just, you know, what we yeah. typically hang out and chat about stuff or whatever. But and then it becomes a much more focused, you know, conversation, which is good. So any topics to you help. guys? Yeah. Any other topics you guys have ideas for whatever? Let me know. Um, and I'll do what I can to get either authors or even outside people if we can come in and do presentations um, every so often. So because I think they they're more informative than a lot of times it ends up being me like talking about <laughs> stuff and I mean you know we all know different things right yeah. I know this and I do that and you do this and I you do that and I yeah. can't talk about what you do because I yeah. have no idea you know so it makes it better when other people join in. <laughs> um, so awesome. Okay. Um, if anybody has anything else, if not, we'll uh, say good night. And thanks again. Appreciate you guys all being here. We'll see Bye. you next month. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you guys. Thanks.